portion of New Day Northwest is sponsored by Recovery Cafe. Well, this morning we continue our series on the impacts of problem gambling in our community. We want to highlight how addiction uniquely affects certain communities so we can break down barriers and help. So here with some insight is certified problem gambling counselor Sarah Sense Wilson and Victor Liu from Asian Counseling and Referring Services. Thank you for being with us, you guys. Mm -hmm. This is a, a big problem, an ongoing problem, and so we want to touch specifically today on how cultural attitudes might uh, affect gambling and how. So when we're talking about mm -hmm. Native American and Asian communities, mm -hmm. what are the ways that, that those cultural attitudes might impact the notion of gambling? Sure, I'll go first. So with the Asian community, I would say that the prevalence with problem gambling is about six to 60%. The reason it varies so much is because specifically around the Southeast Asian community, it, it has the highest prevalence. And in our community, uh, we tend to be more superstitious. We believe in numerology. Mm -hmm. And in that aspect, I think it has a very strong culture influence around it. And then in general, um, when an Asian immigrant refugee come to this country, we don't speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a casino, that becomes a universal language. And also, you have the opportunity to really challenge that stigma of superstitions that I can actually bring luck to it. That's fascinating. Yeah, okay, so what about Native American community? So for our Native American communities, we've had gambling since time immemorial. Gambling is very much part of our cultural practices and whether that's uh, through sahal or bone games, stick games, canoe races, horse races, it's very much ingrained as part of our culture. And when we look at, in our more modern day, we have casinos, we have different gaming venues where our communities gather and we gather for a variety of purposes and generally, um, those are the hub for our communities. So funeral services, elections, elders gatherings, uh, conferences, these are um, venues that very much are important for our community and they are a place where we gather. Okay, so when we are, we, we're talking about sort of like the cultural background there, which mm -hmm. makes perfect sense why it has been a mm -hmm. part of things for so long, but um, what are the impacts of problem gambling when it goes beyond just sort of a cultural thing that maybe is within range of being okay to um, now it's a problem gambling on families in Asian cultures and Native American cultures? Yeah, so in that aspect though, I would say that when an individual has compulsive gambling, then it becomes a pathological problem. And then a pathological problem gambler oftentimes also has other behavior health issues, including mental health and substance use disorder issues. And unlike other behavior health disorder, pathological problem gambling does not only affect the individual, it actually affects the entire family and there are significant others or relatives and network. So in, in that aspect, it's actually m more severe to me than just a behavioral health disorder because it has it does not impact just an, that individual mm -hmm. that I say it affects this it has this domino impacts on on other and also beyond just having linking it to behavioral health disorder it also has impacts on physical health and losing a relationship losing a financial status losing of family and friends. The physical health part of it, is, be is mm -hmm. that because people are staying and gambling for such long periods of time? Great, great question. I would say that it's beyond just lingering ar around for a long period of time. So as I said, oftentimes I, the, when someone is diagnosed with pathological problem gambling, they may have another that d different mental health disorder, such as depression, mm. and then that directly has an impact on physical health. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. What about these notions of like secrecy, the stigmas attached to it, the pride, is that what makes it hard to, to sort of remove someone from that situation? So I, I wanted to say that in um, both locally, regionally and nationally, tribes are very much at the forefront in addressing, supporting, um, channeling resources and funding towards this issue of problem gambling and that can take the take a the form of supporting um, Evergreen Council for problem gambling 
it could be referrals, it could be treatment services. So tribes are very much active participants in addressing the issue of problem gambling throughout the country. If the secrecy issue is part of it though, if mm -hmm. the person that has a problem gambling is hiding it from those around them, what can those around them do and how can you reach mm -hmm. that person? I want to say that in the state of Washington, we are very fortunate. The reason I say that is because through the funding support from Healthcare Authority, we are able to provide intervention or counseling services to an individual who may have a significant other or family members or friends that are having a gambling issues and hiding that secrecy as you reference. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the, our state funding actually allow us to provide counseling brief intervention to that individual so they can gain support to support that individual who is unwilling to receive services, possibly due to stigma, like you say, pride, or even there's a shaming element involved mm -hmm. but so I think that is an alternative pathway to intervene. So how can we as a community culturally appropriately support the work that is being done in the Asian and Native American communities to address this issue? Well I think that within our tribal communities they are already doing that work and they are providing culturally responsive culturally supportive um, techniques and strategies to really reach the people who want the support. And because our communities are so interwoven and connected with one another, there's generally not a lot of secrets um, around this disorder. Oftentimes people are pretty upfront about, oh, my auntie, my uncle, yes, um, you know, my grandma, they have problem gambling. Um, it is definitely more of a challenge to reel in um, those folks that, that do have a problem gambling. Um, but lots of tribal communities do provide outpatient and um, referrals for those services. Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. that providing services that are culturally and linguistically accessible mm -hmm. and then providing in a familiar setting versus a clinical setting, yeah. normalizing that behavior health disorder for pathological problem yes. gambling and not treat it as there's something wrong with you. So for instance, if I have a fever or cold when I access my primary care, nobody's going to say anything right. negative about right. it, right? right? So we need to really normalize and educate our community to understand that this is normal, it's okay to have a behavioral health disorder and really challenge that stigma. I'm so glad that we're having this conversation too because mm -hmm. that's all part of normalizing it and just getting the word out there yeah. that we're all in this together and we're all looking out for each other. So Yeah, we, we share with our community that if a person has cancer, if a person has high blood pressure, if a person has diabetes, we wouldn't shame them for having those illnesses and that this addiction is very similar and that it's, it's okay to seek help, it's okay. And we really encourage the families to participate in as much as possible in the services as well because we know that there really isn't a separation between family and community. Family is community, community is family. Right. And so as much work that we can do in those communities um, to you know, bring awareness and as you mm -hmm. said, normalize it and um, bring those resources to um, those communities, then we're going to see that they benefit the greatest. Yeah, great information. Thank you mm -hmm. for being here with us. And remember, mm -hmm. the number on your screen is the Washington State Problem Gambling Helpline, which is available to call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you need help. We've also got a link to more resources on New Day's website.